Hi, everybody, and welcome back to our podcast from the Kama Sutra to 2020, where we look at your questions, your concerns, even your worries around all things to do with sex and sexuality. So today we have a very special episode for you because not only do we have with us Dr. Anvita Madan Behel, Anvita, as you know, is a psychosexual therapist and she brings the psychological perspective to the advice that the Kama Sutra has to give. But along with Anvita, we also have with us today Nikita Dixit. Nikita, as I'm sure most of you know, is one of the most dynamic influencers on social media in India today. And she is also the founder of an amazing platform called Be Badass. And I, Nikita, I have to tell you, I love the name. So it's called Be Badass. And if you haven't visited it on Instagram, you need to go and see it. It's uh, visually fantastic, but also, it's amazing at the number of issues that it tackles. I know that Nikita started this as a platform to provide information and to tackle issues, relevant questions, et cetera, that women generally want answers to. But I think it's grown from there and it's become something that all young people and all people can come to. So Nikita, you really are an amazing person um, to follow these days and we're so happy to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. And what an introduction. I mean, what an introduction. And as you know, Seema, I absolutely love you. And it is such a pleasure to be here in conversation with you and Dr. Anvita. I'm super excited. Well, we are very delighted to have you there. Anvita, um, you met Nikita a brief while ago. Yes. And it is so lovely because I think she speaks about such amazing and interesting things and more a lot of current topics that a lot of people are talking about. So I'm really excited to learn more and have conversations and, you know, provide some information there. So really excited about this session. Yep, absolutely. So Nikita, Anvita and I had a little chat about this and we decided that um, there's a lot of stuff that you do, which excites us tremendously, but there's one particular thing that you talk about, which has us so curious and interested that I thought that we have to touch upon this today because our knowledge on this is not very much. So you talk about something called ethical porn. Now, Anvita and I have done a lot of conversations on porn. As we know it, the porn industry is, has been a certain way for many, many years. And we've seen the, down, um, the downward trend in people, in their relationships, in their sexuality, in their mental health because of this. But now suddenly we have another platform called Ethical Porn. So tell us a little bit more, please. So uh, mainstream porn is just problematic on so many levels, right? Um, it has uh, women being objectified. Uh, they, there are just derogatory storylines. And I mean, these days there are no storylines. It's just, um, you know, just blatant objectification. And um, it's it's also problematic on the front that there aren't fair wages, that there, there's sexual coercion, there's a lot of abuse involved. So it's just, it's, it's not that great. And I know that many people, especially in this country, um, turn to porn um, for sex education because there is a lack of comprehensive sex education in the country. And ultimately, if that is what you're watching, you are watching women being objectified, um, then of course, you will, you, you'll come to learn, um, you know, that, that sexual abuse is normal. Um, sexual assault is normal. And, you know, a woman just kind of... Um, putting the man on this pedestal and prioritizing his pleasure is normal. Like that is what's normal. So of course that's, that's super problematic. Now that is where ethical porn comes in. So ethical porn is basically like fair trade porn. Um, and a lot, a lot of the times, you know, ethical porn is created by women. So the, one of the prime issues with mainstream porn is that, you know, that there is, a dominant male gaze. Um, of course, everything is made for men by men. Now, ethical porn changes that. Ethical porn, um, you know, kind of focuses on women in many ways. Um, it prioritizes female pleasure. 
it it is inclusive in terms of body representation in terms of um you know sexual orientation so when when you look at mainstream porn you may feel left out some people may feel left out because let's be honest it's just absolutely unrealistic not just in terms of you know the body image that you see in mainstream porn but in terms of the the storylines or just the you know the script and uh, the performance and everything is just unrealistic um even when it comes to uh, sexuality how they represent it it's just it's not true so ethical porn is a game changer because you feel included you see representation there you 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 realize that you know oh wow like bodies like mine with like um you know stretch marks and a little belly roll they they can they can enjoy pleasure too they they can enjoy sex as well and it's it's absolutely normal and i don't feel left out anymore uh, plus along with that there is of course a uh, consent involved everybody on the set is very very supportive um there's no at least that i know of and in theory there is no sexual abuse or coercion everybody is doing it willingly there's a lot of respect um so yeah so that is what ethical porn is nikita that's you know really amazing to hear that because number of women that have come to my you know this is a new thing that i've been seeing that when they come to the clinic and you would one of the questions that i'll always ask at the beginning is when did you start masturbating or if you masturbate and what it is and so many women would say they've not masturbated or they've never masturbated because they identify as feminist or they identify as women who want to support women and they really feel that the porn industry you know is an act of violence towards women because of the coercion mm. that you spoke about mm. about the abuse and everything and that watching any kind of porn actually would be you know doing something that was against women and that is why and somewhere they feel like there is a link between masturbation and pornography and that they will be mm. unable to masturbate without mm. porn one of course there's hope for those women who do believe in that uh, that there is ethical porn out there uh, that you know they don't need to stick to mainstream cinema you know pornography for it uh, but any but do you have any thoughts about like masturbation and pornography and what do you think well i think um of course like the visual stimulus is the quickest right so i absolutely get that appeal that women are gravitated and for that matter even men are gravitated towards porn when they want to masturbate um but i mean again like as consumers and we are consuming porn right so as consumers it is our um job to be aware to be conscious and you know of the porn that we are consuming so there are of course options you will need to do a bit of research but there is there is feminist porn ethical porn essentially is uh, called feminist porn for this reason because because you know it's it's not derogatory um so i mean that is an option apart from this um apart from porn uh, ethical porn especially i feel like there are more options um i think seema and me we were on this webinar and we had a chat and there were people who were discussing how um you know people love to fantasize um they will role play in their head so that is an option that is a great option then there is erotic literature which is another great option it it not it not only it's like i mean it's great for your brain it helps you visualize and then there is just no end it's it's honestly in my opinion even better than porn because porn it's it just ends at a certain point but when you're reading something or when you visualize it there is no end i mean you can have like a series of novel in your head if you want it's it's just endless so so yeah i mean i would recommend the, this as well some people also love to fantasize about their exes um so so that's another thing so so yeah I think that I like that um yeah definitely a lot of options and I I really actually like the idea also of the erotic literature um I know I re- I read an article recently about this woman in Maharashtra who said that there was a huge gap in the market in Marathi literature for ero- you know for erotic literature and she started to write a lot of it for women 
Um, so, you know, I wish that she translated into other languages as well. But so, you know, the more I listen to you about this idea of ethical porn, the more I'm taking to it, I must admit, because it just <laughs> sounds like something. Let's be real. You know, it is part of our lives, no matter how much we say it's bad for you, it's bad for you, it's bad for you. Um, people are going to consume porn. We cannot do away with it. It is going to be something that people will watch at different ages. And it's the, the fear, I guess the reason that we don't like it is, it's the fear is the um, ideas that people are coming away with, you know? So the generations that are younger, what are they growing up with? And so if we have an alternative where you can actually grow up with, like you said, fair trade porn, you know, it's like actually slightly more realistic ideas, then, it definitely sounds, um, in theory, a really fantastic thing. But talk to me a little bit more, but there's a point you made about body image. And that actually got uh, me interested because, uh, so my daughter recently decided that she was going to make these chai bombs. And uh, the chai bombs are amazing. You know, they're, they're these um, fabulous sort of white chocolate things filled with Kashmiri chai and pista and all sorts of things. And you drop them and, oh my God, they're so delicious. And for International Women's Day, we decided, well, she decided to get a mold of, um, you know, the body, the female body. And it's fabulous. Now, you've seen candles like that and things. And so it was made, you know, with this female body. It's beautifully made. But both of us looked at it and we were like, are we doing the wrong thing by women by making this body so perfect? Because that's the only mold that you can get. Now, we actually went out and we found somewhere somebody started doing candles in exactly that position, but with a slight belly, with those little rolls around the waist, etc. which funnily enough, in the Kama Sutra, that was part of your beauty. A woman was considered beautiful. That was the ultimate in her beauty. If she had three rolls of flesh on her stomach. So if you had three folds of flesh, that was considered a sign of absolute beauty. And I just think somewhere along the way, I don't know how we've got so screwed up that we think that it's got to be like this streamlined shape. So we couldn't get hold of those molds. But talk to me a little bit more about body image and how is this going to help? Because I tell you what, we talk about young girls growing up with bad body image, even women of my age. We have so many insecurities and complexes and we think so badly about ourselves just because we think our bodies are not perfect. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, um, talking from experience, I'll just share like a couple of stories. Um, and it's just my friends who when we have these sex talks, these girl talks, right? And um, they always are so uh, overwhelmed by the idea of just getting naked with a man, right? It just overwhelms them. And they'll tell me like how they can never have the lights on. Whereas um, some men aren't as conscious, although I have heard your conversations in the past where, um, you know, uh, somebody did say, Ranveer did say that he, men are really conscious about their body. So I guess it's both ways. But, but women, uh, I'll speak for women. Women are so conscious. Um, they will literally hold back. If at all they have the guts to do it, they will hold back from certain positions, right? Like most women that I know are absolutely... Uh, petrified of being on top because they feel like their tummy rolls will jiggle right and and of course like that is natural that will happen that will happen to men who are on top I mean it is going to happen it is so natural but but I feel like it it obviously the the fear in them comes from the fact that they have been exposed to this mainstream porn or even mainstream cinema that is um, you know slightly pornographic uh, comes with uh, some amount of nudity. The the body standards that this industry has created in general is just is just so unreal. It is absolutely flat tummy with a bouncy butt and you know like really um, really perky uh, boobs. It's just like it's a combination that you can probably get like. Um, a woman will have one in a million, one of those gene pool, uh, you know, lottery that somebody wins. Otherwise, it's just Photoshop. And I don't understand how most women don't get it that mainstream porn uses Photoshop. And it, I mean, at so many levels, there's Photoshop, there's plastic surgery, 
there's there are just multiple surgeries that i don't even know the no- name of you know so so it definitely and of course like most of us have been exposed to mainstream porn even i got introduced to ethical porn very recently where i was exposed to real bodies and i was like oh wow look at these people with normal bodies like mine having sex i did not know that was possible i thought only these prim and proper perfect looking people are capable of having sex and enjoying it so uh, so i mean that was a pleasant surprise and i feel like for most people that's going to happen as soon as you shift to ethical porn and you you have that option i mean people do have that option of watching something that is more inclusive it's it's either that they're not aware of it or it's probably that they're lazy but but trust me i feel like people especially people who have body image issues because of porn and are hesitant um you know when when it comes to sexual acts uh, you know about your body so please women please please go do some research watch ethical porn the bodies are more realistic you'll feel so much better about yourself and you will be able to enjoy yourself more because trust me you deserve pleasure and you deserve orgasm so just go watch ethical porn and what i want to add to that is actually that i think men find a lot of performance anxiety from porn now because once again like nikita is saying so much of it is photoshop so much of it is using software or camera angles or everything and uh, now men feeling the pressure of having the six packs and the muscles and everything once again they are as conscious about the performance or the sexual act and everything and added to what nikita was saying that normal bodies don't look like that like they're mostly photoshopped or plastic surgery has happened and also when you will speak to people like common people they will say that they will find those bodies really skinny and they like voluptuous bodies or they like bodies that feel more normal or common or you know that they are attracted so this idea also out there that men only like thin bodies or women only like a certain kind of bodies is actually not true because people feel attracted to very different um kind of body types and they are attracted or aroused by different things some might be aroused by bigger hips or bigger tummies or you know different different things um so that also i think is a myth um that only thin work and hopefully also what might come to light is amrita if you remember we've had young girls writing in and saying um i i've got dark patches on my inside thighs and is that normal i don't know who to ask and hopefully if they're showing normal women because most women have those dark patches on the upper inside thigh maybe this is something that they'll see actually does exist or men who are saying oh you know i'm crooked or whatever maybe this is a good time for them to see that everybody's um either the male organ generally leans to one side or the other it has a little bit of a curve in it so i think just putting a lot of basic fears to rest as well yeah or you know when we talk about breasts like nikita was talking that one breast doesn't look like the other breast this is rarely spoken about because most women think that they need to be twins or identical twins and that never happens there will be a shape difference or a size difference or you know they they'll sag differently or something and nobody ever talks about it and they think there's something wrong and no two breasts will look alike or no two vaginas will look alike or penis um, and that's something that we don't see because you know they're photoshopped or and like nikita is saying um they're perfected to whatever whoever decided that was the right way to look and we don't even know who decided that so tell me um i mean like i said i am actually thinking seriously about going along and watching some of this ethical porn you you you're convincing me by the minute literally <laughs> i don't watch porn at all but you know this might just be a, a point here that i want to start but um tell me one of the things that i find most problematic from pornography or what pornography is generating is just this idea of how people now relate to each other it's destroying relationships because like you said with mainstream porn there is suddenly just it's just about sex 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 or you know and there's no actual story to it there there used to be a time i think anvita said this earlier that there used to be a time when 
um, you know, there was a story around it. Okay, there is this man and he meets this woman and then they do this and this is what they're talking about. Now, there isn't even that. It's just, it's so cut and dried. And unfortunately, this is again a lesson that everybody is taking away from it, that this is what you do. You come in, you go bang, 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 and you're over and done with, and you go to the next partner and you go bang, bang, bang. Okay, so for me, this is one of the biggest problems is what it is doing to relationships. Tell me, do you think that ethical porn has an angle on relationships? Um, so it definitely does. There are storylines um, and there are romantic angles. There are, of course, fantasy angles as well, because let's be honest, most women have fantasies. So there's that, but, but with the added element of consent. So it's absolutely fine. But, but yes, um, as you were saying, and I feel like that's a general problem, not, not just um, porn. I feel like romance is dead. In fact, like in mainstream porn, if you go and search for categories, um, so many of the things that are normal are not normalized there. Like those are fetishes. So like romance as a category or erotica is a fetish. Like it's, it's a minor subcategory, right? Because that's not normal. That's not normal out there in the world of mainstream porn. Similarly, you were talking about bodies earlier. So skinny body is the normal, but, but they call it like a plus size body or like a voluptuous body or like a big body. That is a fetish. So that's, that's something that is offbeat and weird. It's a subcategory. So, so I feel like, um, and I feel like that's, that's happened because of probably, you know, how, how lives, how our lives and how the society has changed in the age of social media, where, where we live for that instant gratification and everything is instant and fast paced and we don't really take out the time to invest in a relationship or invest in that bond that may last. Um, and of course, like porn definitely has a big role to play because, because it has convinced people that good sex only comes when you detach from that person. And so, so you should be doing this with multiple people and, and detached sex is great. But as, as soon as you're emotionally invested, the, the sex kind of dies and the pleasure dies. And this is, this is just an image that if you think about it, like this is something that I've gathered from most of the movies that I've seen as well. Like it's not just porn. I have gathered this uh, and I've been conditioned this way myself. And it's only just now that I'm realizing it. Like I feel like even I have this mindset that romance kind of kills the vibe maybe kills the spark you know if you're if you're in love you don't have that spark it dies down after a while and i feel like mainstream media has has popularized that idea but porn has definitely added that cherry on that cake you know uh, where it has exaggerated that in terms of sex so it's definitely changing how the society revolves around relationships and views relationships, especially like my generation or the, the younger generations that are coming. Uh, but I know, uh, Seema, you have a lot to say on this in terms of relationship, because I have had this conversation with you that you believe that, you know, the greatest pleasure comes when you're the most comfortable with that person. So please share a bit about that, because I would love to hear more again. So the Kama Sutra says that actually the best sex is with somebody that you've been with for a very long time, because this idea of instant chemistry is that, you know, you see somebody, you get excited, you finish, you're gone. And if we say that there's so much pleasure involved in sex, then you've lost out on all that pleasure. You know, by the time you've looked at this woman and her breasts and you've said, wow, they're gorgeous, you already have a hard on, you've had your sex. You haven't even had a chance to enjoy those breasts. You know what I mean? Like it's, you, you kind of mm. go past it. So they say that if you have been with somebody, number one, it means that it's more comfortable. Comfort is a great factor in good sex. Um, you have enough time to be with that person. You don't have to be looking over your shoulder and thinking, okay, hurry up, hurry up, you know, because I might get into trouble. But finally, because it takes longer to come to arousal, it's just that you actually get to every, or you, you, touch upon every stage of your arousal, which is amazing because you feel far more pleasure as you go past each thing, rather than having sort of bypassed the whole thing, you know, because you've taken a concord out of here. So um, definitely, I think, and I personally, 
I know a lot of people ask this question about monogamy and so on, but I personally do believe that anything in life worth having, you have to work towards. Monogamy can be very pleasurable if you don't look at it as a bad word and if you work at it. But, you know, so if ethical porn can actually bring that idea back, um, that, you know, relationships are important, I think that would be pretty amazing. And with that, what do you think? Yeah, as in, I was just going to say, connecting it to what Nikita was saying in this, initially about the sex education bit. The problem is that porn does act as sex, sex education in the South Asian culture because there is no comprehensive sexuality education. Or even if in the Western world, nobody's actually, people are just teaching you reproductive sex. They're not teaching you how actually to get pleasure from sex. And when visually all you're seeing is a physical connect and it's like, you know, how you started, it's bang, bang, like let's get it done and over with. That actually doesn't really teach you about what's about intimacy, trust, relationship, connecting with someone, respecting someone, loving someone. And all those elements speak to what you were speaking about, Seema, about getting comfortable, right? There is an emotional connection there which is completely missing from mainstream porn like there is no there's nothing to do with emotions there even if we say romance is dead there's nothing to do with emotional intimacy or emotions there and I am not as in I'm not even one saying that people can't have one night stands and they don't need to have they need to have emotions in sex but the reality is that seeing the other person as a person rather than an object or a sex object changes the dynamic. And what mainstream pornography does is just shows the two people as two objects, like just two sex objects, which are just moving towards getting the orgasm, being done with it, and that's it. Um, and in any sexual relationship, having some intimacy or some emotionality or romance definitely enhances um, the sexual act. Definitely, I think so too. So um, I, I can see that there is hope on the horizon. Nikita, yay, you know, you, you're flying the flag for um, <laughs> the porn and you never know. I, and actually, as the last question for today, I really want to ask you about this because next week, um, Anveta and I plan to touch upon a subject that a lot of people have been writing into us about, which is about young people having sex for the first time. A lot of girls who are so concerned, they're worried, they don't know what they're getting into. Nobody's actually taught them. Um, young men who are going in for, into sex for the first time and so on. So there's just so much worry. There's so much fear around it. You know, a lot of them say that I'm very happy to do lots of things, but I can't bear the idea of sex because it scares me. So it's not because of, you know, prud the prudeness or prudishness or anything. It's just that idea of being nervous and frightened so what i would like is talking about this that you've obviously researched the subject you know a lot about it and i know that you feel that it's a way forward and a really helping a helpful hint for a lot of people tell me um what would you say to a lot of young people i know that you basically focus on trying to bring women to an understanding of things so uh, let's say to young women for instance who are thinking of having sex for the first time, what are the tips and um, advice that you would give them? And what do you think they can get out of the ethical porn that you were talking about? All right. So I think adding on to what Dr. Ranvita said, because I think it's, it is really important for me to kind of point out as well, casual sex is absolutely okay. And I encourage it. Um, it's not that I'm against it, but there there needs to be this level of comfort. So now coming to the point of, you know, um, having sex for the first time, and I absolutely understand the nervousness that's, uh, that's you know, around your first time because there's so much pressure, a woman's and first the time. the idea of pain. Be... A lot yeah. of the girls are very, very frightened of the pain. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also the whole pressure that, you know, the society has placed on a woman's virginity. Uh, which is which is a mythical concept, by the way. But anyway, um, so so I mean, uh, you know, coming to the psychological aspect of it, and my advice to women would be, um, you first of all need to be comfortable with that person. Like you may be super casual with this person, and you do not need to be in love with this person, but you need to be comfortable 
comfortable with this person and if you are uncomfortable and you you really nervous and you're unsure about this person then it's not it's not the right time to have sex like please please get rid of this pressure that you need to have sex at this age or at this point or oh you've been dating this person for so long and you don't feel like it but you think that you need to do it no you do not need to do it you don't owe anybody anything at all it is your right to say no that you're not ready for it in fact it is your right to even back out at the very last minute like even when you've started you you both of you are you know in bed together doing whatever you are and when it just comes to the point of sex or or insertion and you change your mind and you're nervous it is your right to say no say no and say i'm i'm i've changed my mind i'm not ready for it and that's absolutely okay so just first of all know that it is okay to say no do not feel pressured into doing it um and apart from that if you are nervous you're super comfortable with that with this person and you're still nervous i would say just just be open in communicating uh, your nervousness because uh, this other person may be nervous as well if you you two are comfortable with each other this person will understand it will do everybody in their part to make you comfortable and to make this experience a pleasurable one for you and and it is normal to be nervous i mean you know most of us have been there and everybody is nervous trust me like there's nobody who hasn't been nervous before their first time literally so it's absolutely fine just take it slow and and remember to stick to your own pace stick to your terms you do not need to compromise you do not need to give in to peer pressure so i think these are a couple of things that are important and communication is super important if you're nervous so communication will really help just let the person know how you're feeling and take it easy take it slow um ethical porn will set the mood right have some candles wear great perfume lingerie if that makes you feel good like just get into your comfortable space get into a space that you like um do things that make you feel comfortable about yourself wear clothes that make you feel good and you know i feel like all of these things might just be mood setters and and you'll get into that moment and it will come naturally as cliche and as cheesy as it sounds it does happen naturally and it will come naturally to you when you are in the right headspace with the person who respects you who respects your consent and you know who you're comfortable with So yeah, so then just go with the flow. That's about it. Anurita, do you want to add something to that? I love that answer. I love that answer actually. And if you're going to do the video next week, but um, and we will talk more in depth about it. But I truly, as in, I couldn't agree more with Nikita that if you are comfortable, you know, if there's any discomfort, that's when the pressure will be there. That's when the stress will be there. That's when you'll not be sure about it. And if you're not in the moment, you can't get pleasure. But once you're comfortable, all the, of course, there will be wrinkles and nervousness and stress, but all of them will come to the wayside once you get into it. But the, if the initial comfort is not there, then it will always stay. The stress and the pressure or like not wanting to do it, that will always stay and it won't be a pleasurable experience. So I wouldn't, you know, I couldn't agree more. So you know what, um, uh, what I was thinking was that we did a video sometime back on lubrication because a lot of women feel that lubrication is something that they um, shouldn't be using. It's almost like a, a an aspersion on the man's ability to arouse them or their own ability to be aroused. And I think so much nonsense. And we were trying to say, please, you must use lubrication. It's not about how good somebody is. It's about your body. And even after we did it, there were remarks on the video saying, um, you know, a man's ability to arouse the woman should be enough. And then we had somebody else saying, astrologically, if you do it on this, this day of the moon, then you will be properly aroused. It's like, you know, stop. So I'll tell you what, Nikita, if there is an ethical porn video that shows somebody using lubrication because it's a good thing, I'm sold. That's one thing. I mean, that would be my tick marks. So if somebody- I am pretty sure video, there is. Now I'm going to oh, find really? it and I'm going to add it in the caption section below, like in the comment section below of this video when it goes out. 
Fantastic. So um, everybody watching later, remember by then, by the time the video goes up, Nikita will have found a video with lubrication being used and the importance of it. And we will have it in our description in the captions. And I want to share one story with something that you started by saying about how in mainstream porn, it is very much about the guy coming in. I want you to, you know, it's over, it's done with ethical porn, trying to change that a little bit, talking about consent. Years ago, when I was still in college, there was this guy that I decided I liked and he decided to ask me out. And he picks me up from college and we're driving along on the ring road in Delhi. So if anybody's familiar with the ring road, this is the most busy road that runs through Delhi. It runs all the way around Delhi, many, many lanes. It's crazy traffic. It's, it's a scary place. So we're driving along on the ring road and he says to me, I'm trying to figure out which hotel to book for us. And I'm like, um, what do you mean which hotel to book for us? And he tells me, well, we're over here together. You know, we're going to go to a hotel. And I'm like, no, let's just drive around. Let's chat. We can kiss a little bit in the back of the car. He was not interested. So basically I said, no. He stopped in the middle of the ring road and turfed me out. He actually took me out onto the middle of that road. Now, at that point, I must tell you, I was heartbroken because I really liked this guy. I was like, you just dumped me. You didn't want to just spend the afternoon kissing me. Am I not worth doing that? Later on, I think, thank God for a basic inner uh, confidence that says, no, I'm okay. Thank you very much. I didn't think about it consciously, but yeah, I mean, ladies, girls, if you're going through a situation like that, don't, don't put yourself to, don't put yourself down. You are worth better. So um, I'm going to um, bring you lots and lots of details, contact details for Nikita, because I know that she's around to answer a lot of questions and has lots of platforms on which she can answer questions. And I'm going to give you several details that you can get in touch with her ad. But just before we do, Nikita, in finishing, would you like to add anything? Because you have been a fabulous guest. And I think that at least I hope that, a pe that people will get a lot out of it. I know that Anvita and I have learned a lot. I am so glad. Um, and, and I think uh, to just kind of finish off, I would say that, well, try out ethical porn. And, um, you know, know that consent Are there any is important. Particular, uh, sorry, just asking, is there any particular maker, a filmmaker that you can recommend? Any particular things that you can recommend in the way of ethical so porn? So that there is this, Swedish um, uh, a filmmaker. Her name is Erika Lust. So if you want to look her up, she's, she's one of the pioneers, um, you know, who's kind of led this movement of ethical porn. So just look her up and, and just a quick Google search. I don't want to like plug in like a couple of websites here. So just a quick Google search will give you a list of, you know, all of these websites. And there are quite a few. Um, again, uh, one of the things that they may be paid, but again, like keep in mind that they do keep the fair wage, um, you know, <laughs> obviously in regard. So of course it is paid, but some of the stuff you can watch for free as well. So, I mean, try your hands and trust me, it is worth the subscription. Like, trust me, it is. So just invest, think of it as self-care and invest in it if you can. Um, and also mm -hmm. I feel like we've spoken a lot about sex and I have spoken a lot about sex and um, you know porn but but yes ladies if if I mean if it's not working out for you with your partner just like take care of it yourself and watch ethical porn and do whatever works for you and just take onus of your own orgasm you know take that responsibility you deserve pleasure so just go get it I mean it's so simple and trust me like it will, your body will thank you for it. Your brain will thank you for it. So just go for it. And if you can invest in a sex toy as well, because that's brilliant. <laughs> so yeah. Wonderful. Anvita, any closing remarks? No, I just, as in, I'm really excited and then I couldn't, you know, um, I, it's been such a learning experience to learn about a lot of things. And also this idea that, you know, women can be in control of their own sexuality and that's what gives them the most pleasure rather than relying. And also this idea that Nikita, Nikita was talking about that 
pleasure for women is okay so don't feel guilty about it or anything invest in it it is fabulous for you so invest in your own pleasure rather than depending on somebody else or something else um invest in your own pleasure so yeah yeah and you know our ancient texts say that pleasure your pleasure is your responsibility it's not somebody else's responsibility another person can be part of your pleasure but it's not them who's going to bring it to you you bring it to yourself you have to open up your own channels and your own brain to decide that you want that pleasure so that's the very first step forward so as always um please do like comment subscribe on the video if you have any questions send them in to info.seema.anand@gmail.com anvita of course is on anvitamadanbehal.com and nikita's um various contact details which i'm going to read out to you because um she can be reached on many many different platforms and she's a very useful person to reach out to so uh it's uh, the instagram handle is bebadass.in so bebadass is literally spelled b e b a d a s s dot i n her email address is nikita.dikshit@hotmail.com which is spelled n i k i t a dot d i x i t at hotmail.com and there is one more instagram handle which is miss.dikshit is that correct nikita yes yes okay wonderful and um i guess all that remains for me is to say thank you all for being over here nikita thank you once again for educating all of us and we'll see you next week